The bull market in stocks never seems to stop. It's relentless, a decade in and no end in sight. In 2011, we saw the beginning of the Euro sovereign debt crisis. In 2015 and 2016, global weakness was drowning the economies around the world. In 2018, 93% of assets globally were in the negative. Today, we are watching the stock markets hitting all-time highs, particularly in the US. The two major contributing factors have been, first and foremost, central bank intervention, and second, stock buybacks. Some would point to earnings, to revenue, to forecasts. These are largely irrelevant today. We've decimated the entire financial industry by simply preventing the natural cleansing process and replacing it with fiat currency injections. The end result is obvious, but should we just go all in anyway? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about the financial system and what has led up to this point. I'm going to bring you back in the pages of history. I'm going to show you what happened specifically in 2019 also. I'm going to tell you what I had mentioned many times before, give you all the details you need to know, and bring it all full circle. Let's begin by taking a look at Janet Yellen. Back in 2017, June 14th to be precise, we had this Janet Yellen being the chair. She's up there at the press conference and this is what she had to say. I think that we, the plan, is one that is consciously intended to avoid creating market strains and to allow the market to adjust to a very gradual and predictable plan. She's talking about quantitative tightening and if you remember very specifically, the market did not like this at all. The process was very simple. Reduce the balance sheet. They couldn't do it though. Check this out. My hope and expectation is that when we decide to go forward with this plan that there will be a very little reaction to it. It's clear how we intend to proceed and that this is something that will just run in the background quietly for a number of years leading to a reduction in the size of our balance sheet and in the outstanding stock of reserves and that it's something that the committee will not be reconsidering from time to time. This right here has a whole bunch of nuggets that I want to cover individually. Number one, the stock of reserves. Does that ring a bell for anybody? What about the repo crisis? That's what we're dealing with today, right? And then you also have, of course, the reduction in the balance sheet. They could barely do that. I'll talk more about that in a second. But we also had this, a number of years. They did not get to that point at all. They reduced their balance sheet for months. They could not get to where they thought it would be not even close. In the next sentence, she said this, we think this is a workable plan and it will, as one of my colleagues described it, like watching paint dry. The expectation here was that they can slowly reduce their balance sheet and get it down to what they thought was a normal level, at least what the Fed thought would be a normal level. And then once the market was satisfied with that, they would keep that amount of reserves going for quite some time. However, it didn't end up the way that they suggested. As soon as they brought in this QT policy, the market started to turn on the Fed, but they didn't listen. They said, it's like watching paint dry. Don't worry, everybody. This is something that we will change if the problems start to come up. But hey, everything is just fine. It's 2017, stock market's up, everything's great. Then we get into 2018 and things start to take a turn, but because they had 2017, behind it, they knew that everything is going to be okay, so we can go forward with this plan. 2019 hits, and by that point there, the sentiment had really changed. You know the details. Right now today, you can see how very different the stock market was and largely the level of optimism in a matter of a year. Take a look at this. You're looking at the red area as well as this here. That's comparing the percentage of optimism or pessimism. If it's red, that means pessimism and the blue is the optimism. And this is quite the opposite in a year span. The stock market came down significantly throughout the last quarter of 2018 and things have really really changed since. Why has that been the case? Well the optimism is based around having a strong economy right? Is it because it's based around the fundamentals or is there something else at play? Regardless investors right now are extremely optimistic. They look around and they see where to put their money and it's very clear 100% in equities is the way to go. I think that it's more important to take a look at this chart. 
This is something that I have covered many times on the channel before and why? Because it happens to be incredibly relevant. You can see the S&P 500 and how it has performed, it's very clear, but when we compare the weekly change in the S&P 500 and the weekly change in the Federal Reserve balance sheet, they just happen to be completely correlated. And you can see largely, I mean, there are variances, of course, but you see this up and down and up and down, basically the exact same pattern emerges. And that should not be ignored. If you want to know the direction of the stock market, you simply need to look at the balance sheet of the Fed. But there is one big question mark, and a lot of people will simply not touch this. They won't go near it, they won't acknowledge it, they sweep it under the rug, but it's a big question mark. I have to ask, for those out there who are like that CNBC anchor saying, I'm 100% in equities, that's the way to go, with so many people behind her saying, that is right, that's the way to go. Everybody with their 401ks, with their retirement accounts, with their stock portfolios with their fractional stocks from their Robinhood account. Everybody is going all in. But what's unusual about it is that central banks are cutting as if we are in a crisis. Why? Why is this the case? Is it because they want to give some more juice, the rocket fuel, to get this going further? Or is there something structurally wrong here and the central banks knew this and so they had to kickstart it? They had to push it further. To me, it's something not jiving between the information we are told and the actions that they have taken. There have been 50 cuts that central banks have done in a year that supposedly is fantastic. The economy, the stock market, and everything. All of this doesn't add up. So please, if you are one of those people, you're all in on equities, you think this is the greatest thing ever, please explain why central banks are cutting like it's a crisis. I don't want to know the effects of it. I think that's pretty clear. I'm talking about why they are doing this. Here is the Fed funds rate, and you can see what has happened over the years. I think it's pretty clear at this time that after the financial crisis, they started to bring these interest rates down and couldn't get them back up. And it stayed that way for years and years on end. And it was kind of a joke that they were unable to get it moving even the slightest bit. But then when they began this policy, they started very slowly, 0.25%, and that was enough for a considerable period of time. But of course, time weighed on the Federal Reserve, and they thought it would be right to start increasing, and they did so very, very, very slowly, as you can see. And then we hit this pivotal moment where they had to start bringing interest rates down again, today sitting at 1.55%. Not going to be able to actually make a serious change because of the damage that is done inside of this financial system. They're not going to admit that to you. They're not going to talk about it. The mainstream media is not going to cover it, that's for sure. But to me, this is very clear. I made this video specifically because I was referencing the information in it over and over and over again, and it is exactly what's gonna happen in the stock market explained in 60 seconds. So I made it specifically so that I can always point to this video in future videos, in future comments, and so on. And it's very clear. You look at the global central bank balance sheet, the direction of it, and you will know where the global stocks are headed. If you look at the global liquidity and you compare that to the global stocks, it gives you a pretty good idea. Now, 2018 taught us something very important, that when there is a even slight contraction in the money supply, this will have a dramatic effect on the stock market. I told you that thousands of times here on the channel. My subscribers, of course, know about it. When we see that uptick in the central bank balance sheets, when we see the global money supply growing, we can absolutely see global stocks heading higher. This is something that I've documented all over this channel and it has become the major contributing factor to what happens with equities. I made this video here, sell all your stocks and buy these four. It is specifically titled, give me five minutes and I'll prove why you must sell all your stocks and buy just these four. Now I presented the information a little bit tongue in cheek, suggesting that look, if central banks are gonna buy these stocks, if they're gonna do the stock buybacks, if they're gonna print more money, then these are the ones you gotta own because these are the ones that are receiving the benefits of all this 
forgery and this fraud that's going on. The fact is today that they have gone up considerably since I made this video back in May 2018. I told my subscribers exactly what's going on and I think people figured it out for the most part because if you look at their activities, if you see it on a daily basis, it happens to unfold for you right before your very eyes. It's not about being bullish or bearish, it's simply the facts. I've made videos like this before in the past, how to find out if insiders are buying or selling. I show you exactly where to check. You can see all of the facts. It's documented right here for you. And then you do what you want with the information. I have people that are on my channel that watch me just to keep them in check. They are fully invested in equities. They've got their 401ks and so on. And all they do is want the information. They want the data. So they watch and then they do whatever that they feel is right. And that's what it's all about. You have to make those decisions for yourself. I know a lot of people, very weak-minded people, who simply buy stocks based on what they see on some video or maybe on a newsletter or chase whatever Warren Buffett buys, and that is a very dangerous policy for you in your retirement. These are the top five stocks that hedge funds are buying, tell you what they're shorting. All of that data is public as well. And I bring it to you, teaching you exactly where to go to get that for yourself. And then we have this video. Yield curve inversion means the Fed will drop interest rates to prevent the market crash. This was very clear to anybody who was paying attention. This was back in March of 2019. And if they were going to increase interest rates, that was going to cause a problem. They would have to actually bring them down in order to prevent a crash. And of course, we saw that. We saw them reducing interest rates multiple times in 2019, despite the fact that they said that they were going to increase them. The whole QT policy stopped. The whole reducing interest rates was the name of the game. There's also this, with no trigger event on the horizon, will stocks ever crash? Now you gotta think about this, for any crash to actually take effect, we need to have a trigger, we need to have that linchpin pulled, we need to be looking at all of these, and I ask the question, will they ever crash? I pose that to you, I show you the data, so that you can be able to determine what you think is right. One of the most important points that is overlooked by all mainstream, by all analysts, is that we had this admission back in 2012, but it was from Jerome Powell, right from the Federal Reserve's own website, they post it, and nobody wants to talk about it, but they specifically mention the Fed's short volatility position. They push this down, and the public is really, really unaware. Take a look at the VIX index, and you will see what manipulation is. It keeps going lower and lower and lower. This is no end in sight for this particular statistic. When you see that volatility is barely moved up when something crazy happens because they know the direction and it's always down, down, down. Of course, in January 2018, we saw some devastating activity because of the VIX because the name of the game was to short the VIX and it turned around rapidly rapidly, but then they just went back to the same old game. This is right now today at the most excessive shorting of the VIX that has ever been seen before. They do not care. And why? Because of QE4. This is really what's happening. The market expected it. And now we are there. I mean, it's crazy to see it. If you want the solutions, how to and solutions is a playlist that I have provided to everybody here on the channel because so many people are asking, what do I do? Well, of course, I don't give financial advice. I can't tell you what to do, but I can certainly provide information that will be helpful to you that is largely not discussed by the mainstream. I created this. There are hours of content in these playlists here that you can check out for yourself. I've got everything top to bottom cover it all. How to and solutions. You just go to the channel, scroll down, and you will see this playlist. A lot of this was created to fill in the blanks for people because they all they know really is, okay, well, I'll just buy an index fund. Well, there's so much more to it than that. And if we could just educate people, they would be so much better off. At the bottom of the page here, you're seeing the e-course. And this is something that I really wanted to get to because a lot of people, they're not going to read the books, so they need the basics. And this is 
really covering what they should have taught in school. Everything from what is a bond, how do stocks work, the reserve currency, the bail-ins, everything else. It's all covered in my e-course, which is located in a playlist here, as well as on my website, themoneygps.com. All of this here is so important for everybody to get into because it really helps us to be empowered. And that's what I want to do. I want to be a positive note to people. Although there is largely a negative overtone here, that is not how it should be perceived. Because what we're looking at is information, good or bad or up or down, left or right, it doesn't matter. It's information and we must take it in and do our best with it. If you found this video informative, hit the thumbs up button. When you click that button, you are supporting this channel. Thank you for that. If you want to learn how to build a business, if you want to learn about passive income, or you're just interested in e-commerce, then check out my free e-course that I created for my subscribers, teaching you step-by-step -step how to sell on Amazon. It's available at the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, the foundation, the history, the asset classes, everything to do with that education that was stripped away from you, check it out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at TheMoneyGPS.com. Do you want the solutions? Do you want to know what's really going on? Well, I talk about it in this playlist here. So click on it and I'll see you there.